All right. 28 to 37, four touchdowns, 300 yards passing. Bengals now three and three. It does not suck to win Sunday. Is there a seriously? I'm watching that game. That game, because there was other big games on, didn't get the publicity it should have outside of Ohio and and in, in the South. It was a great come from behind win. Did it feel different at all being in Louisiana? Different than any other road game? Yeah, it was definitely louder. It was uh, it was interesting to be on the other side of playing against those fans. You really realize how loud it can actually get in that stadium. Uh, it was a it was a really great atmosphere. You know, it, it was funny, um, and I and I've said this. Um, it's almost like your your heartbeat comes down in crisis, like when they put trips to one side. And there's a single receiver, Jamar, to the other side. And you see them bringing pressure. The automatic is go go to the single side, right? Like, um, so to me, when when did you realize they were bringing pressure? Because people decoy that. That's the read for you always is here they come. Okay, the safety's moving. I'm going right to Jamar. When did you you think it was a decoy? Because you could clearly tell. They thought, we want to get this guy at a field goal range. We're going to create a minus play. When did you know for sure, here they come? Well, it's always – I had a feeling pre-snap that they were going to, but you always got to make sure because, you know, teams like to show that and then end up bailing out to uh, to double Jamar. And so I I didn't – I didn't expect it, but I kind of had a feeling that they would do it pre-snap, and so I knew exactly where I was going when I saw the safety rotate down one-on-one. Got to go to that guy. And Jamar knows it's coming. He's looking at you. Yeah. It's a, I mean, he, that's the, that's the hot read, right? Always trips to the one side, single to the other, pressure comes, you're going there. And for the record, when that happens, do you always run the same route? How do you know what route he's running? Uh, that, that was just a called route, one of our called plays. He didn't, he didn't have to adjust his route for, for any reason because of the blitz. Um, we had it pre- protected up front. o did a great job. Uh, and then Jamar did what Jamar does. It's funny. Of all the cities I've been to in the country, New Orleans is the loosest. It's a, it's a different city. Like when you go there, you drink more, you eat more, you stay up later. It's just a different vibe than the rest of the country. Yeah. And you can go back to your college days or Sunday there's a certain vibey, swaggy thing to New Orleans. Did you feel different in your college career or Sunday? That you you just feel there's there's just a little vibe to you playing in that state. Yeah, it's just you know I I sat out on the balcony for about thirty minutes just hearing the sounds of the city. There's always music playing. There's always people having a good time. The the energy of that that city just kind of makes you upbeat, makes you happy, uh, gives you confidence. So it's always fun to be there. So um, it was a really important win for you guys. You guys are also getting into a terrible habit of falling behind. It's like just your thing. Uh, You're the opposite of the Ravens, who lead every game by 10 points. You trail. When you get into that, could I argue there's an advantage to repetitively falling behind? You're very comfortable at it. You did it in the playoffs. It's not ideal, but I mean, you go to your rookie year and to today. Do you feel different trailing than you did your first game as a pro? For sure. You know, the last two years, I mean, really, we had the same problem last year. The second, we were a second half team all of last year. We, you know, find out we were down 24 nothing to the Chargers, ended up coming back and tying the game, had a chance to take the lead. I mean, every game felt like we were coming back. So we're very comfortable in these spots. And you know, we've been able to come back in every single game that we got down. We haven't been able to win all of them, make that final play. What was different about Sunday was we were able to come back and we made that final play, the final two, three plays that it comes down to in the fourth quarter in those kind of games. Is your home and away prep different? Never. Oh, you always got to treat every game the same. You know, maybe you talk a little bit more about communication and hand signals you know, throughout the week when you're playing a road game, but not as far as film or practice or the routine of the week. Okay. Explain to the audience here. 
silent count. So you hear this all the time by announcers. See, I grew up in a small rural village. We didn't have silent count because you couldn't hear the crowd, right? It's like 80 people at my football games. When you go on the road, you see teams get discombobulated, but you practice all week in silent count. So I'm your center. You come to the line. Explain to my audience what it means. Well, the you know a lot of teams do it differently. They either have their center look between the legs or the guard will look back at the quarterback. And whenever you give whatever signal you have, hand, foot, then the, the center will snap it if he's looking between his legs or the guard will see it and then tap the center. Um, it's just – adds one more layer of communication when you're on the road. So it makes, you know, you get a little further down on the game, on the play clock. So you got to be in and out of the huddle faster. You know, if you're in the huddle, it might be harder to hear the play. So you have to repeat it a couple of times. So it just usually takes an extra three or four seconds on average, I would say on the road to just operate. So when I, when I watch you in these late game situations, I'm watching you, but I'm really watching the clock. And I always think to myself, people just, fans don't understand this. So you've got the play. You've got an audible. You're watching the defense. You're watching the, the play clock. You're listening to a coach. Go to your first game as a pro and today. Like I always say, whenever you move to a new city, it takes you about six months to where you drive to work. You don't even think about it. It's like the car turns automatically. I don't have to think about how to get to work, but it takes you a while. Is this is it easier for you today to process all that stuff? Were you a little lost as a rookie? It is that's definitely easier now. I mean, your your rookie year, and the same thing happens when you're learning a new offense. You see, you know, coordinators changing around the league. You come in, you have to learn all this new verbiage, a new language, basically, about how to call plays. You know, everybody has the same plays; they just call them differently. And so you got to learn this new language. You got to translate it to your old language at the beginning. And then if you're in the huddle, your first year, it's going to be a lot harder than your huddle now, because now you can, you've called these plays so many times over three years. If you hear the first part of the play, you can kind of tune out and you know, the rest of it. It's not like that. Your rookie year. So your rookie year definitely takes a lot longer and a lot more prep throughout the week. The, um, so there's been a lot made of roughing the passer. And I, I remember Andrew Luck saying this to me, and I was kind of surprised. He was on with me live years ago, and he said, I, he goes, I love getting popped in the first quarter. He says, I, and I'm like, dude, that's a no, not great. And he said, you can do all you want in warmups, but when you get popped in the NFL, he goes, it's like espresso. And... I think I look at you and I think you're a better late game quarterback than early and some stuff I'm better in the middle of my show than I am at the start of it. I've been doing this 25 years. Do you feel like there is a, a, a looseness um, like explain your ability? I, I, I felt Justin Herbert, by the way, Monday. And now he had an injury. They could have shot him up with something and he wasn't right for the first quarter. He was just out of rhythm. I know he spent two hours warming up. And then by the third and fourth quarter, he's in a complete rhythm. Take me to that process. Well, by the end of the game, you understand how the defenses are trying to play you. So you have more reps invested against this certain look that you're seeing for, from the defense throughout that they were planning on all week. And so now you know how, how they're going to play you against certain formations, two by two, three by one. They know how, you know, you know their blitz pattern for the game. They blitz in on second down, third down. They, they like them blitz first and tens, you know, understand leverages of the corners and nickels. You just have more reps seeing it. And so by the end of the game, I feel like that's when you should be playing your best ball because you've, you've seen how the defense is playing you and you've made your adjustments. And so now you're just out, out there playing. So it is, as far as getting hit, um, do you feel anybody's ever hit you cheaply? Um, not in the NFL, no. Um, I feel like for the most part, guys are pretty scared of getting that 15-yard penalty. They, uh, for the most part, are pretty respectful. Um, I think guys look out for each other on the field for the most part, and they don't want to see injuries. You know, some guys are, are more intense than others, but you know, I've never had a case where a guy's out there trying to trying to hurt somebody. Everybody wants to 
to be healthy. Right. Um, everybody plays through injury. So Russell Wilson banged up. Herbert was not 100% last night. Uh, Dak, Aaron Rodgers this week, you could see him on the camera shots. He kept doing his thumb. Have you ever started a season and ended it without at least one week feeling terrible? <laughs> no, no. That's part of the game. That's uh, part of our jobs as quarterbacks is being reliable and, ca- and accountable to go out there and play. You know, all these guys, the offensive, defensive lines are getting in car wrecks every single play. The running backs and linebackers are running 20 miles an hour head on. They're doing all these physical things. I think it's our job as quarterbacks to show our toughness and bring that side right. out. Go out there and play. Everyone's playing injured at this point in the season. Yeah. Uh, everybody's got something. Uh, and I think that's part of the job at quarterback. You got to fight some through some stuff that other people might not because you're not going out and running 20 miles an hour on a route. If your ankles rolled, you know, you, you could probably go out there and play with it. All right, guys, before we move to our next topic, we all know professional athletes care about what they look like. And as you know, I care about what I look like. Right now, I've been wearing a lot of cuts clothing. I love this thing right now. Every cut shirt is designed to provide a perfectly tailored look. I got t-shirts, I got these golf shirts, look great no matter the occasion. Cuts has revolutionized sort of the traditional outdated t-shirt look, all right? If you want a, a long sleeve Henley, no problem. A short sleeve crew neck, they've got it. Cuts has everything you want. And I've got all of it, and I wear all of it. Right now, 15% off your first order. 15% off, first order. By going to CutsClothing.com slash Colin. Cuts, C-U-T-S. CutsClothing.com slash Colin. 15% off. They got tees. They got hoodies. They got polos. C-U-T-S. Cuts clothing. Look them up. I got a closet full of their stuff and I love it. So I thought it was the best college football weekend of the year. Uh, I'm not anti-Alabama. I'm fatigued from Alabama. So when they lost, I'm not going to lie, I was rooting for Tennessee completely and utterly. <laughs> completely. So, I mean, you, you take me to that. I mean, that was your biggest rival. I was... I was sort of tickled by it. I like I didn't I didn't even know who this Tennessee quarterback was six months ago, and I'm like he's like 25 years old, accurate. I mean, really strong yeah, and accurate. Good. He was good. So yeah. I mean, what's it? I mean, I I liked seeing Alabama get beat. What was your takeaway? Oh, I think that that was a lot of people's takeaway because they just don't lose very often, right? They right. have been so good for so long. You said you're getting tired of it. That's because you know, they have this process and this culture that they've built that they're going to be good year in and year out and they're going to be in contention. Um, and so I think that's a that's a credit to them. Uh, I can't say I would ever root for Alabama. Uh, it was a fun scene to watch on TV. Um, you know, Knoxville getting that win and all those fans celebrating. So it was definitely fun to see. Did Saban recruit you? No, I wasn't exactly the highest recruited guy out of high school. I... Uh, did not have an Alabama offer, no. Okay, so was it Joe Brady that found you at LSU? Uh, so when I was at Ohio State, we had a uh, special teams assistant named Bill Bush, and Bill Bush became the safeties coach at LSU and told Coach O about me when I was transferring. And so that's how the whole process got started. Joe Brady came in before – so I, my junior year, we didn't have Joe – and then Joe came in before my senior year. And did you know instantly? I mean, Ed's totally different human. I've never met anybody like Ed Orgeron. Like yeah. in football or out of football, he's a, he's just the most unique human I've ever met. Yeah. Did you think in the first discussion with Ed, we, I remember my first discussion. I, I remember driving away from USC practice. I'm like, I've never had a discussion like that with a person. Yeah. 
What did you make of Orgeron? It was, uh, I could tell how intense he was, how much he cared about <laughs> winning and how much he cared about the state of Louisiana. It really, I mean, that's, that's why I went there is because he sold me this vision of doing exactly what we ended up doing. Everything that he told me ended up turning out to be true and pulled it off. But he's a, he's a special person that, you know, I wouldn't be here talking to you every Tuesday without Coach O because I would probably be working finance or something. But he, he gave me the opportunity and I ran with it. God, do you re- – and I wouldn't – this wouldn't bother me at all um, if a company didn't give me a shot. Like, do you hold anything against Ohio State? A little bit of I, sh- I, I, I proved you wrong. Like, I would have that in me. Yeah, I mean, I have – I have some of that, but I also still have great relationships there to this day. You know, I'm really close. A lot of the coaches are still there that I'm really close with. Strength staff I'm really close with. You know, when I'm in Columbus, I try to go see them because we're still close. But uh, obviously, there's some of that in me. I think every guy that has played at a, at a high level and gets to this point has a little little bit of that in them. Um, yeah. I wouldn't call it a, a grudge or anything. I, I still love all those people, but... Uh, I'm glad I ended up doing what I did for sure. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife's funny. She says, um, she says I, I one time was talking about balance in my life and she says, honey, you're balanced. You have a chip on both shoulders. <laughs> and I was like, it's not the greatest quality. I've got kids, but I, there is something. And I think I manufacture this in my head. I do like in a weird way, I like people doubting me. Like, what what do you get in your head? Like, in, you're in the NFL now. You make a lot of money now. Life's better now. You got your own place now. You made it. What gets you going? What pisses you off? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has that little dialogue in their head every day about, you know, what they're working for. Um, I'm just, you can feel it week in and week out how much your mood changes based off of winning and losing. And I'm chasing that winning feeling every week, not just during the season, but starting from the week after we stop playing in hopefully February, you know, that's what you're chasing. They're chasing that winning feeling, that feeling in the locker room after a big win, everyone's excited. Everyone's proud of the hard work that they put in up to that point. And you went out and got an opportunity and you made it happen. There's nothing better than that, accomplishing something. And that's, that's what gets me going every day. So I, I always think about this. When you fly home after winning in the NFL, I mean, seriously, it's such a – I mean, if you flew to the West Coast and lost, that is a terrible – Horrible. Unbelievably horrible. <laughs> it's like, I mean, that'd be I mean, like going on vacation with my kids yeah, and losing one of them and having to fly home. It'd be like – Like, what's the worst flight you've ever been on? (sighs) Um, That one last weekend after we lost to the Ravens, Sunday night was tough. I mean, you end up getting back at five in the morning and you just lost a big game. Uh, There's nothing there's nothing worse than that. But then on the other hand, you go to New Orleans in a hostile environment and you get a big come from behind victory. That flight home is why you play the game. God, that'd be great. Um, so I we had you have now thrown. Hold on. Nineteen players in your pro career have caught a pass from you. We all know Tyler and T and Jamar and CJ and AJ. I'm gonna ask you the guys. At the bottom of the list with one or two. I want to see what your memory is. I want to see what your memory is. All right. Trenton Irwin. Do you remember it? Yeah, we still have. I threw him a a back shoulder Omaha takeoff on the left sideline against Jacksonville last year on Thursday night. It was a big play for him. Stanley Morgan. Yeah. I mean, he's a great special teams player for us. I probably hit him with a, a hitch, I assume, or maybe a, a, a quick screen. I don't remember that one. All right. One more. 
Alex Erickson. I throw him a uh, quick screen. My Get, rookie what? year. Okay. What's the play called? You're not getting that call for sure. Why? <laughs> no chance. <laughs> you, want, you want the playbook? I'll, I can email you the playbook too. <laughs> Please. I'll just put it on the volume website. It's no big deal. Yeah. By the way, so your base foundational offense is in. When you go back to practice on Wednesday, how many plays are added? Like, is it like heavy intellectual lifting or is it like adjusting what you have? Yeah, it's always it's always a balance, right? Because you watch the film and you you know determine all these game plan coverage beaters for the week. And sometimes you end up with 10, 12 new plays uh, and you have to balance, you know, how much you can actually put in with going out there and playing free and playing fast and not thinking too much and running stuff that you have reps invested in. And there's only so many reps in the week. And I think that's, you know, we're starting to find that balance of, you know, putting in those five or six plays that you think are going to be really good against their coverage. And then also just running the base stuff that you ran all training camp and you have three years of work invested in. And so I think our coaches are doing a great job of, of balancing that out. Have you ever, has there ever been a play called in a game and you're like, man, we didn't get enough reps on this. I don't love the play. Every now and then, you know, going back college, NFL, there's always one that uh, you feel like maybe you, you didn't get this throw in, during the week or that throw. Um, but, you know, I think what's great about what we do is, you know, Zach always asks me, we always have a meeting on Saturday. Hey, we're going through what I like, what I don't like. And for the most part, we're always on the same page about the plays that we like and we don't like. Um, but if there's one that I feel strongly about that maybe I, I don't like as much, he's usually not going to call it because he knows I'm out there and I'm the run trying to execute it and we're the ones on the field trying to execute it. And so, you know, I think that's a credit to him. You know, a lot, a lot of coaches would feel, feel the same way that he does. And so I'm lucky to have a guy like him. Let me look at your schedule right now. You have games now. You will be favored. There's some backup quarterbacks. There's some young quarterbacks. So you've come out of a situation where you're in intense road environments, star quarterbacks. How do you ensure, because you could look at that schedule and go, oh, shit, win, 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 win. Like, to me, the responsibility is a little on Joe Burrow to kick ass at practice for the next few weeks. Because I could look at that schedule. I'm a, I'm a second-year wide receiver. I'm like, shit, man, I'm hitting my bonus against that team. Like, do you feel like sometimes in those games where you're favored, you become, your leadership is a bigger deal? Yeah, I think. That's fair to say. I think for the most part, we got veteran guys that understand how hard it really is to win in this league every single week. I mean, nothing is ever easy, no matter who you're playing. And we got veteran guys that know how to practice, get the reps in that we need to get to. Because uh, practice is really where you accumulate the timing and chemistry that you need to go out there and have success on Sundays. Okay, so there's apparently... Uh, I'm not on my phone as much as young people, but there's a piece of video that somebody coughed and you kind of had some reaction. Now that you said you, you play in trash bags or whatever. <laughs> and everybody's like, Joe Burrow's afraid of coughing. And I'm like, no, it probably startled him. So first of all, <laughs> explain the coughing video. I haven't seen it. Explain it. I honestly don't even remember it happening in the press conference. I could have been reacting to something completely different. Uh, but based off of the clothes that I was wearing, that had to be week two, week three, somewhere around there. So several weeks ago, but I don't even remember the interaction in the, okay. in the press conference, to be honest. But my staff wrote down seven things that people in America are afraid of. Okay. So I'm going to give you them. There's one here I do not like at all, and I'm not okay. a phobia guy. Uh, but you tell me, not a fan no biggie. Here's mine. I do not like snakes. Like at all. Like snakes. snakes. You like snakes? I like snakes. You could grab a snake. Yeah, I could grab a snake. 
Ay, ay, ay. Uh, now, spiders. Hate spiders. Okay, why? I had, to get my, I had to get my mom to get the spider out of my room several times <laughs> growing up. <laughs> so my daughter is ridiculous. I'm like, a snake has eaten a person. A spider is the, it's the size of a pen. So yeah. what is it with spiders? I don't know. It's a the legs? Question. I don't have the answer uh, for you. Okay, heights. They don't bother me. I like looking down. Clowns. Clowns don't bother me. The dark. No, I'm not scared of the dark. Cooper Cup with two minutes left. <laughs> that I'm scared of. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is afraid of that. Yeah. Um, we're done. That's good. So uh, right now today, this is Tuesday afternoon. This airs Wednesday morning. I've got to ask a perfunctory how do you feel? You told me you bruised like a peach. Seriously, what sore this second? Uh, uh, well, I just got done working out for the last two days, so that's what I'm really sore from. I felt great after the game. Uh, I'm not. I think I'm getting better at not taking those hits that I took in my rookie year and parts of last year, and so I'm learning how to negate those effects on my body. So I've been feeling great. Good for you. Joe, appreciate it. Yep, thanks. See you next week. You bet.